Hello everyone and welcome. I am Coach Castle and today I'll be making a video with my friend Quincy but it'll be me chatting about biomechanics and explaining a little bit about exercise. I figured we just uh You've had a lot of questions about why I think squats, deadlift, bench yeah. press, upright rows. I get rows. asked a lot, why is it not a Why are they bad? Yeah. Why don't I like them? Why are they inefficient? Why are people who do them morons? Mm -hmm. And they are, or they're uneducated, one or the other. A lot of personal trainers, I think, actually probably know that these things are dumb, but they don't know why that they're dumb. I don't, I don't know, hopefully, maybe. But here's the thing. So today we're going to talk about levers, which is something I talk about, and it applies to the gym. Mm -hmm. So here's why. So, um, let's pick a common exercise that everybody does that's really stupid. Um, I don't want to do the squat, the bench press, or the deadlift. I want to make a whole video as to why those are really ridiculous exercises for dumb people. Um, How about bench dips? The di dips, well, dips is always a, a misconception because that's more your front delt than anything. Um, the, the, um, well, the upright row. People say that that works your delts. So uh, let's talk. That's a great the the upright row. Oh no no no. Abs. Yeah. Everybody loves abs. We're gonna talk about abs in this video, guys. So stay with me. Sorry for the hemming and hawing. I'm I'm kind of thinking on camera here. So when it comes to hanging leg raises, Quincy, would you be a dear and Google hanging leg raises for me? Yeah. I want you to to pull up a gym site. Um. All right. I got it, dude. Jesus. Okay. It says. Hold, hold up. What, what site is it? Um, it's from kinkslearning.com. It seems to be a kinesiology. Kinesiology. Ex exercise site. All right. So this is a kinesiology website talking about the hanging uh, leg raise, which yes. is supposed to work your abs. What does the description say? Okay. Hanging leg raises are very effective for development of the lower and upper portion of the abdominals if your legs are raised to a high enough position. Um. Uh, let me see the picture. Let me, just so you guys know, I'm sure most of you have seen this before. Uh, if you can. Oh, yeah, I need a, Oh, there. It is. Okay, so I, I think you guys hopefully saw that. That's the standard hanging uh, leg raise, where either you're hanging like this and then you're lifting your legs up, or your uh, elbows are here and you're again raising your knees up. Mm -hmm. So for all you people who think that those work your abs, you are sadly mistaken. They do not work your abs. Now. If you ask any personal trainer, anyone, they will of course tell you, yes, the abs, uh, they're worked during the hanging leg raise. It's on the kinesiology website. This is somebody who supposedly knows and understands kinesiology. They clearly don't. <laughs> so, let me explain why. Number one, your abdominals are one muscle. Meaning, you don't have upper and lower abs. Meaning, you don't have middle abs. That's not a thing you have one single ab muscle and it's divided by ligaments and tendons. Those ligaments and tendons as divided by give you a six pack or an eight pack or a ten pack that is genetic and cannot be influenced by exercise. You have what you have. The only way you can see your six pack, eight pack, ten pack, whatever is very simple. You have to lose all the fat on top of it. That's it. That's all. That's everything. Everyone already has an ab, one muscle, and uh, you just have to remove the fat. Now, if you develop your abs with proper exercise, of which the hanging leg raise is not one of them, then you will, of course, have better defined abs. You'll get that 3D pop, so on and so forth. <sighs> now, here's why the leg, the hanging leg raise, sorry, does not work your abs. Your abs do not connect to your legs at all, anywhere, on any part of your body, your, ups, your ab muscles do not connect to your legs. The muscle which is responsible for raising your legs is your psoa muscle, also your hip flexor to a small degree. What degree? About 30% degree with the hip flexor. The psoa does the rest of the work. How do I know that? Because I understand biomechanics. Ask your personal trainer. How much does the hanging leg raise exercise the abs? What percentage of load is being transferred to the abs? Mm -hmm. They will not have an answer for you because they're morons. Moving forward, they will also say, if that's true, all you have to do is raise your legs to a 90 degree angle and then rotate your pelvis, okay? 
right to a degree. Here's the degree you're right. You're right to a 5%, possibly 8% degree. If you do that, you will be activating your ab muscles. However, with the principle, again, a principle of biomechanics, the all or nothing principle, muscles can only pull from insertion, insertion sorry, to origin, meaning that the most mobile joint is the insertion and the fixed point or more stable point is the insertion. Mm. In the case of the abs, you're raising in a backwards fashion opposite the resistance curve of the muscle it's supposed to be operating in. It, basically, it's a terrible exercise. You're getting less than 5 to 8% activation in your abs. If you do it like that, which most people don't have the muscular strength to hold their legs 90 degrees in front of them with an isometric Pessoa in hip flexor contraction, while then elevating their pelvis about 15 degrees using their abs. Not their lower abs, there's no such thing, just their abs with the all or nothing contraction principle. If you have a bunch of ropes tied to a 2x4 which has a hinge on it, and you lift one of the ropes, all the ropes come with it. It's not just one rope going, all the ropes go at the same time. It's the all or nothing principle. Likewise, Russian twists, all, all these things, they're not effective. I'm only, sorry, I'm only talking about one today, but just the hanging leg raise does nothing for your abs. Absolutely nothing. And this, is not, this should not be controversial, and it is. This video will be controversial. Personal trainers will argue with me. People will argue me to death about this. I have a whole video addressing why you're wrong with images and science and the biomechanics laid out. It's in the Red Pills of Resistance series. It's called... The red pill of resistance, the abdominals. You can literally see the anatomy, what is functioning, what is not. I break it down very simply. It's a 10 minute video. If you are a so-called personal trainer or an expert or a fitness person or a gym rat, go watch the video. Why do I say that? Because I'm right and you'll improve your life. You will be more efficient and you'll make gains. You'll stop damaging your body and wasting time. If you care about your clients, your personal trainer, you will learn these things. If you don't care, You'll keep repeating the same drivel that's been repeated for 2,000 years. It's ridiculous. It's not scientifically based. It's based on hearsay, he say, she say, and ego, and ego lifting. Again, like, what, how many times have you seen people do something along the lines of the, well, again, just because I mentioned earlier, the upright row. Mm. Okay, well, when you're doing the upright row, the goal, generally speaking, is front delts and lateral delts. That's what you're trying to work. Well, guess what's happening when you're doing this for your lateral delts? This is the active lever for your lateral delt. Lateral delt origin is here, the insertion is here. Its job is to lift the humerus bone and any weight that's attached to it or the weight of the arm itself. So, if you're doing this, this is one lever, this is two levers, and you're doubling your lever, meaning you only have about a two inch lever with whatever weight you're holding. Mm. So guess what happens? You have to lift 100, 200, 300 pounds to get an accurate, well not accurate, but inefficient and damaging about 40% effective load on your muscle with way too much weight when you could just do a lateral raise with six or seven pounds mm. properly. But that doesn't look impressive. What looks more <laughs> impressive, lifting 300 pounds like a moron monkey, damaging your shoulder joints, or laying on your side with a six or seven pound weight, maximally using your lever to full advantage and only training your lap. Yeah, it definitely looks stupid to do the second one, but it's better. It's effective. It's so much better. People don't do it because it's, oh my god, that five pounds feels so heavy. I, I must be weak. This doesn't look impressive. Let yeah. me get a heavy weight. They Let feel me go. shitty about what they're doing. They no. don't want to do it. They I'm, some to do it. I am so proud of the light weights I move because it means I'm efficiently moving my levers and my body in the proper mm -hmm. way. But anyways, let's wrap it up for the day, guys. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start doing these little clips, explaining exercises uh, briefly. Really, I'm just repeating the same stuff over and over, but I guess I, I'm putting it on film. Mm -hmm. So I hope you guys like, stay tuned, and again, for any like clarification or if I misspoke, please go to my Red Pill of Resistance series videos where I explain everything in detail with images, the anatomy, and the actual science laid out for you. This is just casual conversation. This, you know, I, I misspeak sometimes. So that being said, thank you all very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a good day.